Hello, my name is Bradley Wojtek. I am an assistant professor of computational cognitive science and neuroscience at the University of California, San Diego. This web clip provides an overview of the role of neural oscillations in coordinating communication between brain regions. In chapter three, you were introduced to the concept of a neural code. This concept forms the basis of all of modern neuroscience. It's predicated on the idea that neurons encode information about our sensory world. If it's not obvious by now, you'll soon discover just how complex this relatively simple idea really is. Sadly, there doesn't appear to be a single codec for the brain, meaning there doesn't appear to be just one algorithm that the brain uses to encode and decode memories, sensory inputs, and so on. Amazingly, however, recent research suggests that information isn't just encoded by neuronal action potentials. In order to understand how different parts of the brain talk to each other, you have to pick a technique for measuring communication. Because of the speed at which information processing and communication occur in the brain, and because neurons communicate bioelectrically, an ideal method for this kind of research is EEG, and more generally, electrophysiology. In chapter 3, you were introduced to EEG, scalp EEG, and the alpha rhythm, and saw that alpha power changes with cognitive perceptual and behavioral states. As you can see in this slide, if you actually look at the scalp topography of power for different frequency bands on the brain, you can see that theta power, which is uh, 4 to 8 hertz, has a preferential frontal distribution, meaning that theta power is greatest over the frontal cortex and tapers off the farther back you get, whereas alpha power, which is about 8 to 12 hertz, is preferentially strongest over the visual cortices. In chapter 4, you were introduced to the concept of spectral decomposition of EEG signals and the difference between the amplitude and the phase of an oscillation. You were also introduced to the concept of ECOG, which is Invasive Recording of Human Electrical Activity in the Brain. ECOG stands for Electrocorticography, uh, and this is done on patients who are suffering from intractable epilepsy, usually. And that means that they have some sort of seizure activity in the brain that has been localized to a specific brain region, and the surgeon is recording their brain activity to try and identify the focus of epileptogenic activity. And so these patients undergo an invasive brain surgery wherein a grid of electrodes often is placed somewhere on the surface of their cortex. Here you can see an uh, x-ray CT image. Uh, we're stripping away the skull and you can see those little dots there are uh, where the actual electrode grid is placed on the surface of the person's brain. ECOG is a very valuable and important tool in human cognitive neuroscience uh, because it's so rare, partially, and because the signal quality is much better. In this web clip, I'll try to explain how the phase of low frequency oscillations, such as alpha or theta, play an important role in dynamically coordinating brain networks and biases the probability that a group of neurons will fire action potentials. So here's a very toy example showing that when two brain regions are communicating, they are in theory coordinating information, and that coordination can be measured by how synchronized the signal in these two brain regions are. Uh, one way that we measure that synchrony is through a metric we call coherence, which is usually done using phase coherence, and that would be uh, how strongly locked are the two oscillations, such as alpha, between brain region A and brain region B. The reason that we think this is important is uh, based off of work by Pascal Fries and some of his uh, theoretical work. He has this idea of what's known as communication through coherence, which is when two brain regions are phase coherent, then they are more likely and more easily able to send uh, spiking information between one another. While we often can't look at the activity of a single neuron in the human brain, we can look at the activity of a small group of neurons using a measure in ECOG called high gamma. High gamma is just the power at a frequency above usually around 80 to 100 hertz, and the power above this frequency is a pretty good index of local neuronal population firing rate. And so here you can see the event-related spectral perturbation in the colored plot. This has been averaged across time and frequency based upon the phase of an ongoing theta oscillation. And so you can see in the frontal cortex, here this one particular electrode used in the example, that the phase of the ongoing theta oscillation actually biases the probability of seeing high gamma activity, specifically in this case during the trough. So when the theta oscillation hits the trough, high gamma activity increases, which we take as a surrogate for local neuronal population firing. And the color of the electrodes on the surface of that brain indicate the bias in whether the theta oscillation or the alpha oscillation are more strongly biasing gamma activity. So in this particular task, which was a set of non-visual tasks, the, uh, mostly auditory tasks, you can see that electrodes, especially in the frontal cortex, prefer theta oscillation. 
so that the theta phase biases the high gamma activity more strongly than the alpha phase. But when we have the same participants perform a visual task, this pattern shifts a little bit such that in the visual cortex and the parietal cortices, suddenly alpha becomes the dominant rhythm, and so the alpha phase is more strongly biasing the probability of gamma activity. Finally, we find that this theta-gamma coupling, uh, phase-amplitude coupling as we call it, actually changes as a function of age. One of the dominant theories about why most cognitive functions decline as we get older is the neural noise hypothesis. As the brain gets noisier, as the neurons begin to fire at a higher and higher baseline firing rate, then in theory what happens is that this preferential coupling between local neuronal spiking activity and the ongoing oscillation in a brain region should actually decrease, and that's exactly what we have found. So what this may mean is that the, these low frequency oscillations could coordinate multiple brain regions and allow for parallel processing by overlapping neuronal networks with a distributed pattern of low frequency phase regulating information flow both within and between networks uh, acting like a switcher or a router and that this communication mechanism may be disrupted in normal healthy aging. Thank you.